Welcome back. Today I'm going to take you with me to the Dublin Zoo. Ah, the zoo. When budget is low and time doesn't allow for it, you most likely don't have the chance to actually fly out to places. So sometimes it's just nice to grab the camera, grab a couple of your friends and just move over to this amazing place. And while I had a very angry conversation with one of the swans just in front of the zoo, I was also very lucky at the same time, because I had very active tigers when I went there, which is why today I have the pleasure to show you how I transformed this image to that image in Photoshop. Alright guys, my name is Philip and let's jump right into Photoshop. Now let's have a look at what we have to do today. And in fact, it's actually not much, it's going to be some basic cleanup. And let me show you. So we have to sort of clean the fur just a tiny bit. I mean, hey, not gonna lie, that animal is just beautiful. But let's just remove things like tiny hairs which sort of draw the attention and don't just look like just look a little bit dirty so it would be kind of nice if we just you know remove those and so we will do like that has to go away but that's going to be a matter of like a minute or maybe maybe two but <laughs> not too bad otherwise now the next thing i would like to do is if we zoom in we can see there are some colors in the eye but i would like to bring them out a little bit more so we have an actually nice dark brownish reddish color here and just a tiny bit of blue in the center of the eye right here so in this in this inner part and i want to just bring it out a bit and then I'm going to just be happy with it already. And lastly, we're going to put a gradient on it, which has a bit more red here and goes to orange on that side. And that's just going to give the, the image a bit more life. All right. So now that we have this, what looks like tic-tac-toe <laughs> on our uh, empty layer, let's remove that and let's get going by preparing and cleaning up that tiger. Now, there are different ways of cleaning up, for example, fur in Photoshop, I suppose, but we're just going to keep it extremely simple. I'm going to create a new layer by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and N on my keyboard to get exactly that, a new layer on the lower right-hand corner right here. Once I have that, I'll zoom in a good bit and I'll find the hairs I would like to remove. Once I have them, I'll just find my spot healing brush tool, keep it nice and small, and on that new layer, I'll just go over the hair and make sure they disappear. For that, make sure that on the top you have sample all layers selected, because that otherwise we have an empty layer and I can't do anything. Okay, now that we have that hair gone, let's continue to look for hairs which might not be the nicest on the planet. Like this one is a little bit arch, just remove it. And this one, okay. So you see, with that particular tool, it's really not difficult to get rid of stuff like that in your image. Let's remove it to something like there. Okay, that's not bad. We can leave it like that. Awesome. Let's zoom out and see if we missed any kind of important hair. Oh god, yeah, we did. There's one on the top here. We also should remove that, I suppose, because that's the worst. Looks like a grandpa hair. We don't want that. And here we are. Hair is gone. Let's just take that part with us. Perfect. Now that we have removed the hairs, which are obviously the annoying ones, everything else is just perfect. The next part I would like to do is to work a little bit on the eyes. All right, so now we have our new layer, which contains the hair removal. So let's just generate another new layer by hitting again, Command or Control, Alt, Shift and N on the keyboard. With that new layer, I want to apply eye color. Okay, and let's zoom in a little bit to talk about this a bit more in detail. And let me, by the way, just say straight up, this is not my technique. I've learned this like many, many other people watching videos on YouTube, especially from flearn.com. Aaron Nays and his team, they are amazing. Uh, if you haven't you know, heard about them before, then I don't know how it happened, but you definitely should check them out, flearn.com. They are awesome and masters in Photoshop and they teach all kinds of things. Have a look over there as well. Now, what we want to do is essentially we want to take colors which are currently already in the eye, right? And then intensify them a little bit and then just blur that color a little bit to make it look more natural. Now, let's do exactly that. What I'll do, I'll zoom in a ridiculous amount to something like that. All right, that's about 220%. I'll make my brush a tiny bit smaller, maybe to something like that, and also bring the hardness, the hardness down to maybe 20%. 
maybe even make it a bit smaller. Now, what I can do with my brush selected, so I'm going to hit B on my keyboard, get the brush, make that one actually smaller, oops. And now what I can do, if I hold Alt on my keyboard, I have the chance to sample a color from my image, all right? So what I would like to do is I'm going to find a nice color which I would like to intensify. And I was thinking on something which goes into the brown slash orange sort of direction. So let's see what we can find here. That's a very dark brown. That's a more dirty brown. Let's take something like that. If I switch over to the color palette on the top right here for me, then I can now take that color and just drag it up to somewhere like here. And I'm going to do that a bit more intensified just to make clear how it works. All right. That's a bit, maybe a bit bigger. Now, once I have that color selected, which is it is now selected on my brush, I can go in and I can draw in random patterns essentially on the eye, just like that. Just very random. And it's going to seem a little bit weird. And it's supposed to do. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to distribute that color a tiny bit on the eye here. And I'll make sure that because the light comes from the sort of top left hand corner and goes towards the bottom right, I want to make sure that the color, of course, is only intensified in the part which is actually lit and not that much in the part which is in the dark part of the eye, which would be in this area right here. Now, once I have applied my color, so you know, something like that, we can always reduce it if we have to, right? It's time for me to just add another color because why would we not? And for that, again, I'm just going to maybe even create a new layer so that we can keep our color separate. So I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift and N on the keyboard to create a new layer. And let's select a nice one, something like that, and go up to the blue area, to somewhere here, let's say. And I'll do the exact same thing. I'll just start to distribute that color through the inner area of the eye this time, right? So because outside we have the orange. And let's just put that in here. Awesome. Okay, maybe to something like that is already more than enough. Cool. Now, I'm going to go back to my orange layer. Yeah, so I'm just quickly going to sample my orange again, because, of course, we also need to do the same thing for the other eye, because there are always two. But this one doesn't have that much lit area, so I'm just going to keep it really simple and quite low. So I'm just going to bring that in here just a tiny bit, maybe here a little bit at the bottom. Okay, something like that is not bad at all. And now let's switch over to our blue layer. I'll just sample the color again, just that they're fitting. Somewhere like that. Good, go back and put that in just a tiny bit here as well. And again, I'm obviously going to do an incredibly fast job for now, but it's going to be awesome. Let's zoom out a little bit. And there we go. No joke, we're not finished quite yet. So what we have to do is I'm going to click first on the layer which contains my orange information. And I'll change the blend mode from normal down to soft light. Okay. And I'll do the exact same thing also with my blue layer. I'll go down from normal to soft light. Now, now the colors are already less crazily shining out of their eyeballs. So what we want to do is I want to apply a blur to the color. All right. So I'll select first my red one again, my red layer, and I'm going to go to the top to filter and then down to blur and Gaussian blur. Once I'm there, I'll select a blur, which is actually appropriate, not 900. But let's just say something like, let's just pull that down somewhere in the middle that we can see both eyes. Let's say something like, maybe something like this would not be bad. Just to give the whole thing a little bit more color. That's not bad. Let's choose 10 pixels. In a human eyeball, it would be a bit different because we have more patterns. But due to uh, quality reasons, as well as a tiger eye just not being the size of human, I suppose, we're going to go with 10. Normally, I would maybe select 2 or something like that if it were to be a human eye, which it isn't. So let's also do the same thing for the blue layer. And because we have the colors on a separate layer, right, we have the red one and the blue one, I can now go ahead and adjust the opacity for each one of them. So for instance, I could say I want my the, the layer with my reddish color or my orange color to be about 50% opacity. And then I'll take my blue color and also re reduce that one a little bit to maybe something like 80%. And now if I zoom out, I have also the chance to, of course, once I zoomed out, maybe to adjust a little bit more. So how about we bring down the opacity for the red one just a little bit more to something like even, even just 25% should do the trick. Now, here's the thing, right? There's light coming from the top left and going to the lower right. So what we can do is to give the eye a little bit of a nicer effect. We can add lighting in the lid part of the eye. 
And for that, we're going to do this very simple. I'm just going to create a curve adjustment layer, in which case I'll drag up the curve to maybe something like that. Once I have that, I will invert the layer hitting Command or Control I on my keyboard, which will then of course hide the whole effect. And now with a white brush and maybe an opacity of 20%, I'm going to draw the increased brightness in only to the side opposite to the light source, which would be somewhere here. Uh, and I'm just going to bring that in slightly in this area right here. Okay, that's not bad. Maybe even a little bit more, somewhere like that. And let's head over to the other eye and do the same thing, just a little bit. But this eye is actually lit quite well, so we don't have to do it that much there. And now the next part we have to do, if we add light, we also should, I suppose, add some darkness. Right? This just gives a nice contrast. So let's create another curve adjustment layer and drag the curve down to maybe something like that. Why not? I'm going to uh, invert the layer by hitting Command and I. And now I can get going and get that darkness onto the outside of the eye, especially our brownish part here. Okay, and also maybe a little bit in the inside. Just like that. Okay, now let's go over to our other eye and just bring that darkness through a little bit in the dark areas of the eye. Okay, now let's group all that stuff. And maybe I have to reduce the blue a little bit further because it's just too strong for my taste. But you get the idea, right? We don't have to have it that strong. Maybe like that is already enough. Cool, let's group all those and see how it looks if we remove it fully. So I'm going to hit Command-G to group my stuff. And if I switch it on or off, yeah, we have given the eyes a nice depth and a nice, a little bit more of a color profile to them. Again, that's a very personal thing. You can decide for yourself how far you want to go with the eyes and how much color you want to use. But I kind of like the little orange and blue touch. It's just something, I don't know, I'll just like it. Awesome. Now, the next thing we have to do is I wanted to add... Oh, why is that off? We need that on. That's way better. We don't want the hairs in. The next thing I want to do is to add a certain gradient, which just adds a little bit of red color from the top left and then goes to orange to the lower right. And again, of course, we could create a new layer, take a color, use the gradient tool and so on and so forth. But I'm a very lazy person when it comes to Photoshop. So what I'll do, I'll just create a new layer and use a pre-prepared filter. Now, for that, I need all the information on a separate layer. And as I don't have that, I can use it or I can, I can just create it by hitting Command or Control. Alt, Shift, and E on my keyboard. This will create a star visible, which has all the information on, on, a, on its own layer, essentially. And that is what we need. With that selected, go to Filter, and then down to Nick Collection and the Color Effects Pro. Now, once this has loaded up, words, once this has loaded up, I will bring you back. Okay, here we are, and it has loaded up. So, luckily, I just came out at the same filter again. I'm going to use the B color filters from Nick. Right, and what I can do here once I have selected that, first of all, I can switch between the different, you know, the original as well as the adapted version, and now I have a chance to adapt my color set in different kind of options. So I'm just quickly because I know it works, going to select the second color set, which is more like a brownish kind of tone, and then I'm going to um, adapt the vertical shift just a little bit and switch the rotation to something like, maybe something like that. Now, what we have to do, adapt the vertical shift a little bit more. You gotta play with these kind of sliders until you're fully and totally happy. But once you are, you're gonna love it. Maybe something like that is not bad. Let's reduce the opacity to maybe something like this. And the vertical shift a bit more to something like that. Okay, I kinda like that. Let's increase the blend just a bit more to something like this. And once I'm more or less happy, I'll just hit the OK button and let the whole thing load up. And then once more, once the thing has finished thinking, I'll bring you back. And we are back, and the collection has finished applying the sort of pre-prepared filter or the action or whatever it is onto our image. So now you can see if I switch it on or off, it's definitely a big difference. And I just like what it does in terms of coloring the image, right? Not saying that the colors were bad before. I mean, it's a tiger and it has natural colors, but that's more how I see it when I look at the tiger in real life. So let's just keep that one. Now, of course, the only problem is that the filter has made our eyes a little bit dark. So let's just free them again from that particular filter. What I can do with that layer selected, I'll just click on the little layer mask symbol in the lower right hand corner. And now with a black brush, let's just hit B and X, there we go. Let's zoom in a little bit to something like that. And with a black brush and an opacity of about 20%, 
I can now start to remove that particular filter from the eye area right here. All right. So the, every time I go over it, I add or I remove essentially 20% from that filter. And let's also remove it from over here just a little bit. Okay, something like that. Now let's zoom out again and let's switch that on or off. So we see we don't actually affect our eyes, but we affect we do actually affect everything else. And from here onwards, you can do whatever you want. You can, for instance, add some more darkness in the surrounding of the tiger. Let's just bring that down a little bit. Hit Command and I, make a crazy large brush, and just bring that into these areas. Why not? Why not make the edges a tiny bit brighter than they were, uh, darker than they were before? Just a little bit to make the eye focus a bit more on the actual center of the tiger. Okay, and apparently I have an incredibly slow computer if it has to record and Photoshop at the same time. No biggie, we can wait, we have patience. Okay, now let's have a quick look at that before and after. Yeah, I like that, just a tiny bit of darkening down the edges and we are done. That is all I had to do to convert our original image from here to here to the final image. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. If you are new and you haven't already, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button, it's gonna help me out a lot. Other than that, if you have any comments or questions, just drop in, in any comments or questions section below in the blog or on YouTube or wherever you find this. And other than that, go to the zoo. It's gonna be fun. Go to the zoo. Alright guys, I wish you happy processing and I'll see you the next time. Bye!